Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Situation Room here at our emergency at our EOC. We're so excited that y'all are here. Unfortunately, we're not excited that you're here because of the situation coming before us. Obviously, we're we're preparing, and the um, city has been preparing for over a week um, for the brace of Debbie to come rolling through South Carolina. And obviously, we know that that under our city manager's leadership, they've been working tirelessly to prepare. Uh, you know, last time we had a big storm, obviously we had a lot of issues across the city and we, we did an incredible job as a community, as a city, as an employees to address it. But this time we're a little more prepared as we know what to look for. We are in a better situation than we were in 2015 and we're looking forward to addressing these issues one by one. But we want to get our whole team here so that y'all can hear from them about what's being done and how we're preparing. As you obviously know, the, we're concerned about the impacts to the region. Obviously, the state of South Carolina will be thinking about our coastal sisters and brothers as they uh, get the brunt of the embrace. But we also realize that we're going to feel the effects. And when you're talking about 10 to 12 inches, possibly, of rain, heavy winds, a ground soaked, as we already seen this weekend, as we had microbursts throughout our community, a lot of downed trees now. Dominion working double time to make sure people have power, but also making sure lines are trimmed and, and that we have really protecting our system as we brace for um, this, the flash flooding that we could see, for the winds that we could see. Um, with that, I want to turn it over to our city manager to brief and then introduce all of our assistant city managers, our chiefs, everybody who is intricate part um, to making sure that our community is safe. Um, but we want people to be smart, think over the next few days as we embrace for this. Be smart about what you're, what you're doing. Be smart about water situations. Prepare around your home. Make sure that you're prepared for potential power outs as well, that you have provisions not only for you but for your pets. Uh, and let's work as a community to make sure that we're reaching out to our neighbors. If you don't know your neighbor, get to know them before, before the storm hits so that if something comes up that y'all are there together, working together, sharing items, everything from flashlights to candles to food to whatever's needed, working together. Hopefully we won't have that situation, but it's better to be prepared than not prepared. With that, I'd like to introduce Teresa Wilson, our city manager. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Um, as Mayor Rickman indicated, we started this morning uh, here at the Emergency Operations Center making preparations um, for really the unknown. Um, we do know that in 2015 we experienced a, you know, unprecedented rain event um, leading to um, flooding like we had never seen in our community before. And we thought it was really important to come to the community today, come to our media partners to reassure the public that we learned things since 2015. And although our canal infrastructure isn't totally complete, but you'll hear more about that momentarily, we have lots of contingencies in place and certainly wanted to reassure this community because as the provider, um, the main sole provider for water and sewer, in the Midlands, Columbia Water um, is an intricate part of what we do as a city and our operations. We serve over 400,000 customers, and we know that school is about to be back in session. We have wonderful flagship university and many other colleges and universities in Columbia, not to mention the home of the Level 1 Trauma Center in Columbia and five other hospitals. So we do not take it lightly when we hear the projections as low as six to eight inches of rain up to maybe 12 to 15 in the Midlands area that we absolutely um, are going to start early this morning preparing for the worst but hoping for the best. And as of right now, we're hoping for the best. Um, but you will hear from our department leaders um, and me here shortly about some of those preparations. And as Mayor Rickman indicated, the most important thing is to take care of each other, take care of your family members, your neighbors, your pets, um, and listen to the information ahead of time so that you can prepare yourselves accordingly. So with that, I would like to introduce Clint Sheely, our Assistant City Manager for Columbia Water, and again, a real emphasis 
for us today is reassuring the public about um, our water quality and the preparations that we have made since the historic flood in 2015. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Good afternoon. Um, so part of the uh, what's a little bit more troubling about this storm is some of the uncertainty about the path and, and how it might delay and, and stay stagnant and, and dump a lot of precipitation. And so we just don't know. Um, and we're planning for the worst and hoping for the best, as Ms. Wilson said. Um, a lot of you and a lot of our customers may find this um, reminiscent of 2015 and the historic flooding that we had and the precipitation event that occurred then. Um, but we want to take a moment to reassure our customers of where we are in terms of stability of our Columbia Canal and our water supply and, um, and talk just a little bit about that. The, um, although the, the final repairs are, are, are not in place and we're working really hard to get those in place and get those projects out for bid and um, get the funding to make sure that recovery is happening. The, the solution that was put in place rather quickly in 2015 is what we term an, a very robust interim solution. And it served us well for almost nine years and through quite a few storms and precipitation events. We have better control of the flow coming into our canal system by those interim repairs, much better control. We're able to limit the flow that comes in from the Broad River. We also have extra flow capacity to let water out of the canal system should some uh, an excess amount be flowing in from rainfall that occurs in the city and overland flow going into the canal. So we're able to release more water than we could back in 2015 as well. And if any of y'all are familiar with the rock dam that was built very quickly perpendicular to the flow of water in the canal near the hydroelectric generating station and near the breach, that rock dam was built with a lower weir, if you will, an, an overflow relief point. So part of that dam is lower than the rest of it on the city side. And um, that's an emergency relief point for water that will not create uh, an, a scouring event and it's not an earthen dike being overtopped like occurred in 2015. So many, many things that are different. And again, this interim solution, very robust, it served us well and we have a lot of confidence that it's going to continue to serve us well even through this rain event. Um, so I want to reassure our customers about that. Um, we're going to continue providing high quality drinking water in the quantities that are needed to provide fire protection and provide good clean drinking water for our customers. So that's, that's going to continue to happen. Um, we, we also have um, pre-positioned resources throughout our distribution and collection system. Um, we've got uh, plenty of treating compounds at our waste treatment facility and our drinking water plants. We've topped off um, diesel fuel tanks to, to, to fuel our generators. Um, and we've got emergency contractors on standby just in case something does happen that we're not able to handle with our own crews. But for Columbia Water, we're ready, and I want to reassure our customers of that, that we're ready and, um, and for whatever the weather may bring to us. Thank you. Thank you, Clint. Next up, we will hear from our police chief, Skip Holbrook, Columbia Police Department. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Um, the message first and foremost from the police department is we do um, expect um, a, a high water event. Um, we know that we will have standing water and um, what we talk about all the time is if you, if you can see the standing water, don't drive into standing water. Um, we do have areas that uh, are prone for flooding. We'll be pre-staging barricades throughout the city and sandbags in some areas and I think Mr. Anderson may speak, speak to that. Um, but uh, what you can do as a citizen to help us is um, if we do start experiencing um, excessive precipitation that leads to this flooding, you know, we ask you really to stay off the roadways unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, don't drive through standing water. A again, when we're doing a water rescue or we're having to deal with disabled vehicles, um, it's taking us away from oftentimes life-saving measures that may be necessary somewhere else. Um, it's also highly likely that we'll experience some um, that we will experience some um, outages, particularly in intersections. 
Uh, I would remind anybody that is on the roadway, um, when you come upon an intersection that's out, you need to come to a stop and clear that intersection before you uh, proceed forward. Um, slow down, um, listen for emergency vehicles. Um, I would listen for messages that you'll get from um, Ms. Wilson and city staff uh, about um, what to expect from city services um, and look after your neighbor. Thank you. We also have our assistant fire chief with us today, uh, Mickey Bolson with Columbia Richland Fire. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Um, I'm going to echo some of the stuff that uh, Chief Holbrook has already said. So please avoid flooded roadways. Don't take that chance. If you see barricades there, that's going to be pre station They're there for a reason. When you avoid those or go around and not adhere to the precautions that we set out, you put yourself in danger and also the rescue response that's coming to potentially save your life. So please avoid those and um, also plan ahead for possible uh, power outages. Don't use candles. Please avoid using candles. Have some batteries, have flashlights, plan ahead as much as possible. Uh, when you start using candles, there are trip hazards, things can happen, and we're already spread thin doing some type of emergency. So please try to avoid using um, candles. Another thing we're going to use, or you some uh, possibly will be using, is generators. Well, please follow the recommendations that they give you. A well lit area. Do not have your generator in your house, in your garage, and close the door. CO and carbon monoxide from that can cause harm that you don't even know about. So please plan accordingly. Um, down pile lines, avoid them. Use 911, give us a call, um, and be safe. Thank you. Robert Anderson is our director of public works and probably can get more details on some of the other items that have been mentioned. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, I won't reiterate a lot of the flooding issues. and I, I could say this, don't drive in standing water, you'll be better off. But I want to touch on two or three things that, you, you know, we always look for from Public Works. Our crews have been out since this weekend with a little microburst that happened around town. The first thing we'd like to say is help your city out. You know, look around. If the storm drain is actually clogged in front of your house or you see the rain is carrying some leaves out to the there, you know, just go out and rake the storm drain out. There's a lot of times flooding could be adverted by just having a clear storm drain. Our crews are out, but the microburst has put us a little behind, so we are working on those areas. But help us out a little bit on cleaning the storm drains. We, we do look at trees down. The one thing we talked about was down power lines. If you have a limb down, make sure you look to see if there's any power lines in that limbs, in the limb or on the tree or whatever. We would like to address them from our end by calling Dominion and making sure those lines are dead before we clear the roads out. So traffic lights, treat them as a four-way stop. Our crews are coming. If they're completely blank, that means there's a power outage and usually they will reset themselves when they come back on. You know, our crews will be here. We ask you to call the non-emergency number and I'm sure they will give that to you here in a little bit or the emergency number, our crews will respond as needed. Right now we're in cleanup mode and city services are doing uh, what we can to get the city cleaned up before this event. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. That non-emergency number is 803-545-3300, 803-545-3300. And before I call Harry Tinsley, who is our Director of Emergency Management and is the glue for this operation when we go into these weather events, um, he'll give a little summary information and forecasting. Um, but I would reiterate again the importance of preparing ahead, um, using this time today, maybe early tomorrow. Hopefully we're gonna still learn things this evening and in the morning but use the time you have right now to take care of yourselves and your family members, friends, neighbors. Um, we did, as a city, recommend and have already shared this with neighborhood leaders that unfortunately a National Night Out events should be canceled tomorrow evening. Um, nationally, National Night Out is usually celebrated tomorrow, um, but we are hearing that many of our neighborhoods are rescheduling to October. And so we will all look forward to getting through this together and having fun then. 
um, we'll also be making provisions for our unsheltered population in Columbia. We have obviously our rapid, rapid shelter Columbia residents um, who are with us every day, um, but we will make additional provisions as necessary for them, as well as if we determine by in the morning sometime that we need to open the overflow center for the other population in Columbia, we will do that with the help of many partners. With that, I will turn it over to Director Harry Tinsley with Emergency Management, and then we'll open it up for any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Good afternoon. Tropical Storm Debbie is likely to have some significant impacts across our region uh, with widespread flooding, as it's been said. Uh, that'll be into to Tuesday evening through Thursday. Uh, if, if you are north of the I-20 corridor, you, you, you have the potential to see six to eight inches of rain through this event. If you're south of the I-20 corridor, uh, you could get eight to 10 inches of rain. And what we want to make sure is that folks are preparing now. Uh, we, our emergency operations center, which you're in now, will be operated and will be activated around the clock throughout the event. Our experienced staff in here will be monitoring the situation through all the new technology that we've had since the flood of 2015. Um, and we'll be synchronizing our government response efforts uh, for the city and com communicating with our regional partners and, and our external stakeholders as well uh, and provide any resource manage management that may be needed. Uh, I will say this, as has been said many times, but we want the weather forecast to be spot on all the time. Well, things happen. We also want our citizens' response to be spot on. And what do we mean by that? Stay informed. Prepare now, outreach to family and friends, think safety, and on a moment's notice, be ready to implement your plan and follow the guidance of the local officials. Uh, that way we'll get through this together. Um, these are weather events and uh, we can't control the weather, but we're ready, we stand ready here in the city and we'll take care of business, thank you. Thank you, 